Welcome and thank you for joining today for the NeoLoad Feature Tour and Product Demo. Load and performance testing allows you to know how your application will behave under load when used by many users. This way you know when to go live and you prevent system downtime and availability problems. There are a new set of requirements needed to meet the demands of today's performance testers. The solution needs to be built for today's rich applications. It has to be both easy to use and powerful. It needs to be flexible to work with any infrastructure. It ought to be able to handle both small and large scale tests. It must include powerful analysis tools which provide actionable insight, and it should provide a flexible licensing structure. This is exactly what NeoLoad gives you. NeoLoad keeps up on all the latest technologies, including protocols and behaviors. Here's an overview list of supported technologies. Here is an architectural diagram of NeoLoad. The controller is where you create your scripts, modify your scenarios, set up your targets and goals, and eventually run your tests. For load generation, NeoLoad takes a hybrid approach. You can either generate the load locally or take it to the cloud. You can monitor each tier of your deployment from the controller or from the extracted NeoLoad monitoring engine. This engine allows you to place the monitoring within the same subnetwork as the deployment to bypass firewall issues. The design of our agentless monitoring modules, based on industry standards, ensures non-intrusive remote monitoring with all of these products shown. Now, with the Neotis Cloud Platform, NeoLoad integrates load generation from the cloud into testing campaigns when and as needed. For testing mobile versions of web and native mobile applications, NeoLoad has specific features including bandwidth simulation providing accurate values for each technology. For this feature tour demo, I'll be using a shopping cart web application with a specific business workflow. You're now looking at the NeoLoad controller. To create a script, all we have to do is click the Start Recording button. This will bring up the recording window. Let's name our new script Buyer. Since we are going to launch the web browser and then sign into the application, we will put all of the startup tasks into the init immutable container. I'll click the OK button to continue on. We are now presented with the floating recording bar allowing modification of the script by adding containers which can be used to group certain actions together. Now let's create a business transaction by typing home page into the container edit box. Then we'll click on the application link to start our shopping cart application. Since we're going to click the sign in link, we'll change the container name to login and then click on the link to launch the sign in page. My next step is to change the container name to read Submit Credentials. I'll now click the Submit button to complete the login process for getting into the shopping cart application. We are now within the main functionality of the application, so I'm going to change the Record In dropdown to reflect the recording of my next transactions to be within the Actions container. Now that I have actions set, I'll change the container name to choose category and proceed to click on a pet to start adding to my shopping cart. Let's change the name of the container to be choose product and select a product from the list available. Now let's end the recording and see our results back on the controller. As you can see, NeoLoad has organized my script based on the init action and end sections we made during recording. We can also see the containers we created on the floating recording bar. Another great feature is the ability to right-click on an element or many elements and disable them with a single click so they won't be played during runtime. For advanced cases, a JavaScript action may be added to a virtual user definition, which means I can insert this JavaScript action when designing a script anytime I need it. There are many instances in your scripts where you'll want to have items or selections picked randomly for a more realistic scenario. In our case, I want to have the buyer randomly pick a pet, not just a dog. Opening up the container, I can now get to the transaction that needs to be modified. 
Clicking on this transaction, I can see this is the pet selected during recording. Let's make this choice dynamic in just a few simple clicks. To start this process, just simply double click on the value dogs. Now let's extract the value to be played from the page listing the pets. By clicking on the automatic configuration button, NeoLoad will then configure the extractor to be used for you. Now we can see that NeoLoad indicates that the category ID, which was dogs, is an extracted parameter. Let's add a loop to purchase several pets. Here's where NeoLoad really shows off its ability to customize scripts without having to know a programming language. It's as simple as clicking and dragging the loop icon to the location in the script where you want to perform that particular action. Next, I just simply select the transactions I want to repeat and move them into the loop. By clicking on the loop icon, I have the ability to change how many times I want to execute that particular loop. Once the scenario has been modified, I need to check that it's valid with no errors in the design. I can do this by clicking the Check Virtual User icon located on the menu bar. The Check Virtual User window will let me validate one virtual user against the scenario I just recorded and see how it's played out. Once this check of the scenario has been completed, I can now validate if the run has been a success or not. NeoLoad has built-in service level agreement functionality. I can define the expected level of performance for any item within the scenario. Here, using the SLA wizard, I can set my alert triggers as to what is acceptable or not. In this case, I've set it up so that NeoLoad will automatically flag results if 95% of the response times are above the specified limits. NeoLoad offers an optional collaboration module, allowing teams to save time and be more productive by sharing virtual user profiles, test results, and even tagging project versions. By utilizing an update wizard, the elements that will be updated to the local version of the project are listed in the form of a design tree. Every element which can be updated carries an icon bringing information about the kind of changes and the type of collaboration transaction. In this example, a new virtual user profile named Browser, modifications to the existing buyer script, and a new NeoLoad variable are all going to be updated onto the local project from the team server. Now I'll make some modifications to the project and publish them up to the team server. I've created a new virtual user called Account Creation with some recorded transactions. I can publish these changes by simply clicking the Publish icon located on the menu bar. Just like it did in the Update section, NeoLoad opens up another wizard to guide you through the steps of publishing changes. All the modifications that I made to the project are listed, some server modifications, as well as the new virtual user I just created. Thanks to NeoLoad's proxy recorder, I can record an application, browser-based or native, running on any smartphone or tablet. Also, with the Identify As feature we saw earlier, you don't have to have the specific mobile device to record. This allows the browser used while recording to simulate another browser or mobile device's web browser. By clicking on the Populations tab and then the Browser Selection button, I can then select the mobile device I want to simulate for my performance test. Here I'll choose the iPhone 4S. Because mobile devices usually access the network with lower bandwidth, Setting the appropriate bandwidth is essential to realistically simulating mobile traffic. NeoLoad allows you to set the bandwidth to be used during the test. For this test, I'll select 3G with an average signal strength to go along with the iPhone device I picked earlier. In order to pinpoint a performance glitch during a test, NeoLoad gives you the power to collect information from the server's infrastructure via its agentless monitoring modules. 
The design of our monitoring modules, based on industry standards, ensures non-intrusive remote monitoring. Neoload now provides the ability to deploy several monitoring engines in sub-networks with our new externalized monitoring feature. Now, all of the monitoring engines communicate with the controller using just a single port. By default, Neoload automatically selects the most common counters for each server type. You may also select the counters manually. To return to the Neoload default counters, just simply click on the default button. Alert thresholds are preset for each counter. You can modify them or create new ones. In addition to the usual performance counters, Neoload also provides performance indicators. For example, these indicators reveal which SQL queries use the most resources during the test. Now I'll switch over to the runtime component. The Scenarios tab contains all the settings required to run a load test. The populations to be executed during the scenario are defined first. Then, the following items may be configured for each of the selected populations. Test duration of the population, population load policy, for example, the number and variety of virtual users to be generated. Then, defining all the load generators needed to run the population. You can choose to utilize many different types of load generators ones that are local within your network, or load generators located out in the cloud. Cloud load generators can be started and managed directly from the NeoLoad controller and is fully integrated with the Neotis cloud platform. This makes it simple for you to launch and use as many load generators as needed at a moment's notice, allowing you to test your entire application delivery chain from different parts of the globe. Now that I have everything set up to run, it's time for me to click the play button and start the test. As the test is running, I can start observing the impact of the load on the server's infrastructure in real time. Statistics in the monitors can be plotted on graphs during runtime. When the test is first run, NeoLoad creates default graphs. These can be modified during the test, or new graphs can be created by simply clicking and dragging. Here's an example of a graph that is showing a server alert based on a threshold that was set when I created the monitor. Alert details may be obtained while the test is running. In this case, I can get further detail on the server alerts that were observed on the runtime graph. By looking at the runtime users tab, I can gather information about the run status of all the virtual users that are being utilized for the test. Neoload adds more flexibility in load management by having the ability to change the load while a test is running. As before, you can set up your load very precisely before starting the test, but you can also react to the various indicators available during the test to adjust the load while the test is in midstream. Once the test has been completed, Neoload brings up the Test Summary tab, which contains all the main statistics for the test. By clicking on any of the links, we can go to further summary details. Here I've clicked on hotspots and can see immediately things like the five longest alerts filtered by alert importance, or more importantly, the five pages having produced the longest average or maximum response times. I can even see the results for indicators relating to SQL requests. These are some other examples of the types of data I can gather from just the summary results. Here is how the new SLA feature will be displayed for a profile. Since the number is in red and the icon is a thundercloud, Neoload is indicating that my SLA has failed the threshold I set up earlier. Another powerful feature of Neoload is its ability to generate a report that compares two sets of test results. Through comparison, you can analyze results from different runs of the same or different scenarios, providing the means of identifying potential performance bottlenecks in your application. Advanced statistics and graphs about every tested application component 
can be gathered by going to the Values tab. Neolode offers a huge portfolio of graphs to assist you in analyzing problems based on your infrastructure's behavior. Graph templates available under the Template tab give you an immediate view of the application's behavior during the load test. You may also define custom graph templates as well. Running a test in debug mode gives you the ability to validate the various virtual user profiles with greater accuracy to get to the root of problems within the application. By clicking on the Display Virtual User button, I'm able to see all parts of each transaction for that particular virtual user that had errors and find the root cause very rapidly. Neoload launches a report wizard, which allows you to generate reports based on test results containing predefined data as well as graphs and statistics. A report may also contain custom graphs and comments. You can generate a report in many different formats, such as Word, PDF, HTML, and even XML. For PDF and Word format reports, the cover page and footers can match all your company's logos and colors. Here is the generated report in PDF format with links to all the sections that were included when I ran the report wizard. Results summary page, the buyer scripts containers results, and the average page response time. As we saw earlier, in regards to the optional collaboration module, we can even publish test results to the team server. By clicking on the Publish Test Results from the Share menu, Neolo launches the Results Manager. This window allows me to perform many different functions on all of my test results. I'll select and publish two test results to the team server. The results manager also allows me to get results from other team members that have been generating reports. By clicking the Remote Results button, Neolo presents me with the Remote Results Manager, where I can see and retrieve other team members' results onto my local project. I can easily identify where the test results are stored either on the team server or on my local project based on the Neolo location icons. I'll start the retrieval process by selecting a record and then clicking the Retrieve button. Once I close the Remote Results Manager, I'm presented with the test results I just retrieved and can analyze them just like I would if I ran them myself. Thank you for taking the time to attend this demo. Should you have any additional questions, please utilize any of the links listed here.